okay so what's an initialization block okay uh, remember in the last class we discussed about the uh, constructors which are used to initialize uh, the non static variables so uh, non static in variables you can initialize using the constructors but how about the static variables the static variables how do you initialize the static variables automatically we don't have any constructor for static variables so in that case they have also provided us with an initialization block so initialization blocks are of two types okay so initialization blocks are of actually two types one is static initialization block and one is non-static initialization block. So I think non-static we have already seen one, just one example of the non-static initialization block yesterday we saw. Okay, so today we'll concentrate more about the static initialization block and uh, how the order of execution when a class members uh, is is loaded or how it happens, what is the flow. Okay, that we will see. Okay, so what's an initialization block? Initialization block is a scope of code okay it's a block of code which is started and ended you uh, by this curly braces okay so whatever you write inside this curly bracket those are inside the initialization block okay and in the static initialization block you just have to denote it with a static keyword okay so if you use static keyword just before the uh, initialization block then it becomes static initialization block so as static is the one which is connected to class it's not related to object okay not related to object so this is only related to the uh, sorry connected to class okay so this is a part of the class not the object okay so when we load the class then automatically along with the class our static initialization block is loaded okay and that is the first thing which is actually loaded in the memory when a class is loaded okay so even before loading the uh, like the static members our initialization block is getting loaded okay why because the initialization block is going to initialize those static variables which are there okay so we might be using that static variable somewhere in the code so that has to have some values and that values we will be putting in our static initialization block okay so along with the whenever we call a class okay whenever you we use any member of the class that particular class has to be loaded to the memory and when the class is loaded to the memory the static initialization block is loaded static member variables are loaded static methods are loaded and then that is the sequence how it goes okay now if you go ahead and try to create an object of the class okay so the non static parts are loaded in the uh, when the object is created okay so static part is loaded when the class is loaded to the memory okay so static members loaded when class is loaded in the memory okay and the static members are loaded only once okay in in one execution it is loaded only once let's say you call a method or you, you use a, a variable okay be it a static or non-static so that particular class the compiler or the uh, the runtime environment will not know about that class unless that class is loaded to the memory so when it's loaded to the memory then the static members will be loaded so in static initialization block will be loaded then the static variables will be loaded static methods will be loaded okay so so static initialization block okay then we have static variables then we have static methods okay so these are the members okay so the, these are the members which will be loaded in the memory when a class is loaded okay and the class is loaded only once in the execution if it doesn't matter if you call the static variables once again so it doesn't mean that the class will be loaded again it's already there in the memory so it will just pull it from there okay and that hence initialization block a static initialization block is also called just once because the class is loaded just once so static initialization block is is loaded or it's called every time the class is loaded okay so so this block is loaded to the memory every uh, sorry every time the class is loaded to the memory 
okay so along with the class the static initialization block is also lit so every time the class is getting loaded the static initialization block will be called so whatever code is there inside the static initial initialization block that will be automatically called okay or executed okay okay so that was about the static members how they will be loaded okay this we'll see in practice as well okay now once the static things is loaded only then after that the non-static part will be loaded and that too it will be loaded only if you create an object if you don't create an object if you call any static method then only the static members will be loaded okay and if you create an object in that case only the static members will be loaded first then the non-static part will be loaded that means then the constructor is going to be called then the uh, sorry non-static and then the non-static initialization block will be there then the constructor is called and then after that all the variables will be loaded members will be loaded and they will be initialized that is how it will happen and then it will call the uh, non-static method if you have uh, if you're trying to call it okay so that is how it will happen so first the static part will be loaded in the memory and the static part will be loaded only once okay even if you create multiple objects the static part will be loaded only once because they are the class part they will be loaded only once in the memory and after that if you create multiple objects multiple times the constructor is going to be called multiple times the non-static initialization log will be called okay so non-static part will be loaded to the memory every time you are creating an object okay but the static part will be loaded to the memory only once in that particular execution okay so that is about it okay so let's see how these things work okay so let me just try to create a new apex class okay so we can say execution demo okay so we have created one class and the class structure is provided by salesforce here okay 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 so now how the static initialization block will look like so if you just have static okay and if you have the block so this becomes a uh, static initialization block so every time the uh, compiler or the execute uh, the runtime environment has to load stat the class into the memory this static initialization block is going to be called okay and whatever is the code inside this block they will be executed it could be any kind of code we can write even uh, sql queries inside this code okay we can um, write system.debugs we can write system. Uh, um, equals assert equals okay all those things whatever you want that logic you can write inside so basically ba basically it's used to initialize variables which are static variables okay so let's say every time our class we want to have one uh, record or a list of accounts available to us every time we don't have to we don't want to go to the uh, uh, query again and again and we try to retrieve that list of records we don't want to do that we want to have the list of records available with us whenever this class is loaded so that in the later part of the class we can use that that list of uh, accounts or maybe opportunities any s objects okay or maybe some custom object so that we can do okay so all we have to do is we have to create one public static variable okay and this variable will be what kind of object should we take we should uh, we can take maybe departments okay so we can take departments public static we can have departments it's a custom object so underscore underscore c okay and uh, what is the name of the variable let's say uh, dp something okay okay so the variable is created now how do we initialize that if you want you can directly initialize it from here okay or you can also initialize it from the static initialization block okay so it's throwing us an error with invalid type departments so maybe i have not used s when i have created that that was okay now if you want we want to initialize these departments what we can do is we can write a query here departments equals to select name we want all the fields so we can get all the fields in the query okay and then we'll check out all the fields and we'll try to retrieve those so we have something called fees as this is our custom field then we have uh, master detail relationship is also there and one scholarship formula is there so we want that also 
okay and then there's a relationship field so in the relationship field always they will use they will save the id of the parent object or the parent record okay so we can use this particular record okay so let me just check this out and from which object we want so we want it from the op department's object okay so let me just try to check this out once in the query editor and let's see what happens okay let's try to execute okay so scholarship underscore underscore it will be r okay Scholarships, okay. This is a formula field. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Underscore, underscore C, is it? Okay, let me try that. Okay, let me check what is the field here. Scholarship underscore underscore C is it? Okay, okay, we'll try that. We'll take it as scholarship underscore underscore C itself. Okay. All right, so this is our field. Okay, these are the fields which are available. And as you see in the PU college, it is always so showing us the ID. So which ID is the one which is connected to it? So if you take this ID, we will be routed to that particular record. Okay, so if we go here. Okay, so this is the record which it, it is connected to. So this record it's showing it has four child objects, child records. Okay. So these are the departments which are connected to this particular record. So that is why all of them are showing the parent record uh, record ID. Okay. All right. So these are the fields that we wanted to retrieve. So let us quickly get back to our topic. So let me just take this query and let me just put it inside our query editor here. Okay. Okay. So we still have one issue here. Oh, that is gone. Okay. So now let us save it okay and if you want to use this particular variable anytime automatically this static initialization will be will be loaded to the memory then the variable will be loaded so it will be initialized okay so that is how the execution will happen so how do you know that this particular static initialization block is getting called so we'll just try to use this variable once okay and we'll see what happens so we can use it from any other class probably or we can also use it from the anonymous window to check out the execution what we can do Mm. Okay. okay so if we try to uh, so how do we use a static variable or static member using the class name so we use the we take the class name okay and we try to uh, let's say we want to display it okay we want to debug it so we can do system dot debug okay and uh, we can put our class name dot the variable name so what is the name of the variable that we can put it here okay and it will it is going to throw us an error because department is going to uh, it's it's a list it cannot be just one variable with one record so this particular variable is capable of holding only one record of department okay if there are more values of the uh, department more records of the department it will throw that there's more value to be assigned in that particular list okay so we'll try to execute and let's see 
okay so the list has more than one rows for assignment to s object so we need to have a list here okay so you can create a list of department okay so now this should work fine we are just going to save it okay and then we execute this so that list of records will be displayed here or the list of departments will be available okay so now the list of departments are available to us in our code okay so then we can go ahead and later use this particular list of department okay so now later if we want to update their uh, descriptions or uh, we should have one description field also no automatically it's not created okay so that is fine so what we can do is if you want to update any field in our department using that list we can also go ahead and do that so let us say information science we can have one more field where we can add some kind of values so let's say we will create a new field on our department some kind of description field so we'll have a maybe text area okay so 255 characters that is fine so we'll create a text and text area in our department object and we'll name it uh, maybe description okay so they, it will be appended by underscore underscore c we don't want to make it a required field uh, it's fine so we can say it description about the record that's okay so then we click next and yeah, that's fine next okay okay so we should have a description field here okay which should be like a text area where we can put some information so this description field is there so we can add some information here 255 characters max okay so that we are going to add for every record so how do we do that we just have to write one method okay so in that method we can uh, add certain logic to uh, update our field so as of now we have all the records in this variable already with us okay just give me one second okay so what we're going to do is as we have the variable initialized and this variable has the list of all the departments so we are just going to update that particular field okay so that field also we'll have to fetch in order to update that okay so that field name is description we'll just take it from here so that field we will take it from here and we'll copy it here and we'll add this underscore underscore c okay so this should work as of now all of them should be blank okay as of now all the all the fields of the description should be flank, blank in all the records okay as we as it was not existing before okay so if that once that is sorted now we can just create a method so we can create maybe a public static uh, method of return type is void mm. okay we are not going to return a void we are going to return a list of uh, string okay and that string is going to be the list of updated values okay whatever prescription fields that we have updated that we are going to return in a list okay or we can also return a map with the list of that particular id okay so we are going to do that so let's return a map with the id okay comma string okay so our map is going to be returned and we have a method update uh, departments okay 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 so that is our method okay so it is going to update uh, put something in the department or description field okay and it's going to return us with the map which which record is having which description so it is going to return us our map so we can fetch the id along with the the value of the description okay so that is what we're going to do so you still um, have remember uh, do you remember the concepts of the map like how we used to use them and what is the use of map okay so we need to return a map here okay so as we have a list of records we have not seen iteration yet okay for loop and all so i'm just going to use it don't uh, get confused with it i'm just going to loop through this all the all the records 
okay as we have to update all the records so we're just going to loop through all these records so i'm just going to take this particular object here oops control c so we are going to loop through this we want some variable to hold that value so about this for loop and all we'll we'll see we'll see later in in data classes okay so don't worry just understand as of now that we are going to loop through each of the records so as how many records we have uh, oops. Uh, let me execute this we have some four records right so we are going to loop through all of them one by one each of them one by one okay so and once we loop through each of them so there we are going to update the field okay so update this description field we are going to do so what we have to do is d dot then we just need a description description field and we're just going to add it uh, some date we are going to add okay so what we are going to add is let's say updated on okay plus date dot today so it'll just add today's date and it will update it okay so this should work because we are trying to change the date record into a string okay yeah this syntax is correct okay that is fine now okay so we are we are going to add description timestamp on every uh, each of them so the description is going to have today's date and it will just say updated on this date that's it that all that is all we are going to do and once we are done okay so it is still not added to the our database because we have not done any dml operation so this will be just present in the code it will not add inside our database it will not reflect here okay or here it is not going to reflect here this description will not come even if we execute this part okay so to do that what we need to do is we need to do some kind of dml operation and here we are not trying to insert any record which does not exist here we are trying to update the record which already exists that means we have to use the dml operation update okay and in the update okay so there is a governor limit for update operation or any dml operation we should not do more than 100 dml operations at one code or at one go okay if we do that then our database will become slow so that is why salesforce has implemented that uh, limitation there so we don't have to put that update here how we should be uh, we can we can do something like this then update uh, d okay so that will update that particular record for so let's say as of now we have only four records so four time soql uh, like the uh, database will be manipulated what if it has more than 100 records or if if it had like 1000 records in that case like it has to run the update 1000 times okay we don't want to do that we don't have to do that as we have the power of collection okay what we can do is we can update the whole list at once okay so if we do d dot description equals to or whatever the updated value we have added okay so this particular list that we have in the this particular variable so all the variables will have will in the description field they will have the updated value there okay in the list it's already available so all we need to do is just update that list that is it so we can update deps that's it so at one go we are we are minimizing the or we are ex uh, uh, what you call we are we are skipping the hundred of sql queries okay in just one go we can just update it once that is it we don't have to update it every time in the loop okay so all the so database queries or database manipulation languages or dml operations we should never put it inside loop okay as of now here we have only four records so only four times the loop will go what if we have like hundreds and thousands of records because the actual org will not have only like so less records right so in that case we should not do any dml operation inside the loop okay uh, definitely uh, we should not do because we don't know the size of this particular list as this is our org we know that this is uh, how many records it is what about production we don't know how many records there are there are there right so for that so we can update the departments at once so all the records will be updated at once and they will be uh, added the value with this particular value whatever we are giving here okay now once we have done that now we have to compose a map okay and that map we have to return return back to us okay so the updation is done so that map we have to uh, add some values to the map so what we can do is we have to create a map in that case so we can create a local variable for that map so let's say map id 
comma string so we need a map of id and string and then let's say map is updated map which is something like that equals to new map id comma string okay so we can have a map like this okay so our map is ready and as of now this map does not have any value so we are just going to add all the values one by one along with its ids okay so in the map what we can do is we can add updated map dot put okay so here first we have to add one key so key is the id so what we have to do d dot id so that id will be the corresponding and the id will be there for the first record the id will be here okay and the corresponding value we want is we want the description field whatever the description we are giving okay so we can use d dot description okay so along with the corresponding id the description will be available so we are putting that inside a map and in the end we are just going to return that particular map to whoever is trying to access that okay so from here we just have to return a value return our map what is the name of our map updated map that's it so our program is complete now whoever calls this particular method they are going to uh, get a list of or uh, they are going to get a map of uh, values with all the updated timestamp okay so all of the all of the records will have updated values okay that we can do so the recently updated values will be uh, in the description and it will have the corresponding um, ids which id has with this description that we will get in this map okay so is the is the code clear do you have any questions on this are you not able to understand any of the lines here